We are at the residence and workshop of Bob Dross, a famous Dutch bot model builder uh, here in Amsterdam, and he is the owner of Bel Air Models, and we're going to visit with Bob. He's going to tell us about his models, how he got interested in it, how he makes these amazing works of art, and Bob, thank you very much for agreeing to, to meet with me today. That's okay, Henry. I, you're most welcome here. Thank you very, very much, Bob. So, uh, when did I understand that you've been making the models, these particular models, since the mid 1980s? Prior to that, did you were you a uh, a model out of the box kit kit builder? Or? No, I built uh, 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 jigsaw puzzles for my kids. Yes, like uh, airplanes, etc. And they had to put the parts together to form an airplane of it. Right. And then uh, I thought wood is not the good material because you have to fill in all these, you know, right. the, the putty and the one. Yeah. So I used plexiglass. Yes. And then I noticed that plexiglass is a wonderful thing yes. to do. And then I made a game for these children, right. the London to Melbourne race with little airplanes right. of plexiglass. Okay. And I I drilled the holes for the windows of these machines. Right. And my youngest son, who was 10 at a time, okay. said, Dad, this is plexiglass. Why don't you just tape the windows? Yes. Paint the plane. Amazing. And, and take off the windows. Right. So he was the one who made... He came up with the concept. Came up with the concept. Yes. And uh, he had been uh, earning a little money from this idea for every model I made, wow. I gave him some, you know. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> so it so it, it, it just started in, in the mid 80s and he said, no, I'm going, I'm interested in aviation. I'm now going to apply this technique to airplanes. Yeah, yeah. I first started with little guitars. Right. And I had, an, I, I built guitar, uh, electric guitars. Yes. And uh, you could, with the plexiglass, you could uh, make this, uh, this, this nice paintwork like they, with flames in it, etc., with a with, right. a with a small uh, airbrush, and uh, but guitar players are not well. The fiancés bought the models for their friends, okay, and they said that it shouldn't be too expensive because we have no money, right? And then I went to America to yes. the Guitar Player magazine, yes, and Tom Wheeler said, "Okay, we make an article." I said, "Okay," yeah. so I brought the models. They yes. photographed it, yes, and they had the article. And he said, how, how, how much will they be? Because I put the price in it as well. Yes. And I was used to about 70 guilders here. So I said, $180 a piece. Right. And, and th or this is a guitar that's... Like 10 centimeters. Okay. And um, he said, okay, we put that in. And the article was there. Right. And I was very, very anxious to know what, what the result was. And there was one, one or two people who ordered a guitar. But I, I gave up when... An old lady from Texas asked me if I did some little cute teddy bears too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so then I changed so, subject. Yeah, to a more. Um, and then I got to the planes. Right. Okay. So let's talk about the the subject matter of the aircraft. Your your models have historically been of of Dutch um, aviation historical interest and aircraft airliners from the pre-war years, I would say, 1920s yeah, yeah, and 30s. Yeah. How did you, was it your Dutch heritage that brought you to that? No, it was the, the, the people who wanted to models who said, I want this, I want that. And okay. they, because it was a Dutch, it was at Schiphol, a shop at Schiphol, and they said, uh, uh, our customers want probably the old Dutch famous airliners from Fokker. Right. So we ordered Fokker, yes. and he ordered DC threes and DC twos. DC five, yeah. And DC five. Yes. Later. Right. So that was the start, and then uh, uh, when it went well, I thought there's much more to build, and I had my own preferences. Right. And when I had some name, and I had my catalog. Yes. I put on a De Watine from France, and I put on a Penouette from France, and right. I put some other stuff in, like the the Savoia. Right, the ambassador and the ambassador. ambassador. Yes, and uh, so so yeah. Well, that's 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 part of the story too. It was in fact Alan Turner who was the first one who ordered a model. With really, him. very and, interesting. And, 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 and the people from Schiphol saw it, and yeah. then it followed. You know, so the, let me yeah. just interject for those of you that don't know, Alan Turner is a, a British 
expat that lives here in the Netherlands and he is an avid airline fan and model display model collector. His collection goes back decades and he is the gentleman that you're talking and about. And he said, I see these little planes from your game for the children. Can you make it bigger? Right. From the same material. Right. And I said, no, because you cannot put a saw in it. It, 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 it runs hot. You right. Know? So then I tried to find out how to do it with a milling machine. Yes. And there was a guy who said, no, you can't do it with a milling machine. Plexiglass is too, uh, too, too weak for that because we are used to, to use these, uh, these milling machines for molding in, uh, in, 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 in stainless steel. Okay. So we have to, to put it in. Right. Uh, in hundreds of kilos to yeah. to keep it uh, uh, free from trilling a vibrations vibrations okay. right yes. so he said you cannot you cannot put do this with plexiglass and then I said oh, okay let's try it yes. you know? and he said well we we build a, a complete cabin around the machine and put in a block of plexiglass and he said okay let's see what it, what, what it goes yeah until it sprang you know yeah. bang and then he said. Well, I have two mu, mu? Yeah, mu. It is an, uh, a maat thing. A maat. Uh, it, it's, uh, um, you know mu? I don't. Well, it is, uh, yeah, say, one million of a millimeter. Yeah. Oh my goodness, okay. okay that's a, a, mil a million of a millimeter. My God. I got two million of a millimeter vibration. Okay. So we can't do it. We said, okay, except we can do it with that because, you know, for me, if that's okay. Yes. We said, okay, let's do it. And from then on, we made them. Right. So the, the scale that was, you, 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 you really started with was one two hundredth? Of... No, just these are the first ones. Right. These, these models and here. And these are all different scales. They are different. He said about 20 to 30 centimeters. Okay. Because that would fit on his shelf, you know. Right. Yeah, this is, of course, a bigger scale than this yeah this japanese versus the yeah. uh, spitfire yeah. and this one is even bigger than this one so correct but yeah. and, but then i started to do one seventy second and later 148 scale wow wow no it's it's very very impressive um a, a lot of people have been you know admirers admirers of your models for for decades and um it, it'll be very, very interesting, you know, to see how you explain the the the, the exactness and the difficulty yeah. that physically goes into the production of one of these models. Yeah. And you'll, you're going to take us to your shop to show us um, a layman's view, if you will, of what goes into the production of one of these pieces. Yeah. If you'd like to learn more about Bob's excellent models, visit him at his website, bell-air-models.com. If you collect aircraft display models, why not consider my new book, The Aircraft Display Model Collector, Investor, and Appraisal Guide. It's now available at henrytenby.com.